Welcome to Reader's Digest, Whit. We're Thanks. delighted to have you on board. Thanks. Um, your film, Love and Friendship, is an adaptation, and it's a Jane Austen adaptation. And I take it you're a big Jane Austen fan. So tell us about your your friendship with Jane Austen. Well, I started out badly. Uh, I was very stupid. Um, I was an 18-year-old, and I read Northanger Abbey, which is the wrong thing to read because it's a parody of Gothic novels. And I never read a Gothic novel, so I had no idea she, what she was doing. So I loudly told everyone that she was overrated and how could they <laughs> like her and all that. Fortunately, my sister clued me in, you know, read more. And so I read Sense, Sensibility, and Pride and Prejudice, got to love her, mm -hmm. read everything, um, particularly like uh, Persuasion, Mansfield Park, and, uh, and Pride and Prejudice. And um, I went back to read Northanger Abbey 20, 30 years later, mm -hmm. you know, will I like it better? I did like it better. I would worked editing um, gothic novels in my first job, and so I knew what she was making fun of. But in this, that edition, they um, published Lady Susan. Ah, and it was right. a revelation because I'd always loved Oscar Wilde, and I felt this was like Jane Austen channeling Oscar Wilde. Congratulations on being about to receive the most accomplished flirt in all England. Excuse me for arriving this way. What a delightful family pose. Lady um, Susan Vernon's character is quite wicked and quite manipulative. Did you do much work around her for the film? Did you change her in any way? Um, people say that she's a lot nicer. They think she's a lot nicer in the film than in the book. They, some people say that it seems like Jane Austen really hated her. <laughs> and we don't really hate her. Um, she's not evil so much as amoral and opportunistic, but it seems really funny, and it reminds me of the movie uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with Steve Martin and Michael Caine, because they're up to no good, obviously, but it's really funny watching their manipulations, and it's sort of the same thing with Chloe Sevigny and Kate Beckinsale on this. But someone like Lady Susan, in literature of that time, characters like hers came to a bad end. Yes. And something different happens here. Yes. I don't know, though. Is that really true in fielding? I don't know. I think in the 18th century, they were open to all kinds of things. Um, things became more proper and more restricted, maybe, mm -hmm. as the 19th century went on. I mean, some people think that Jane Austen sort of anticipated Victorianism. Right. Um, she became, you know, very devout and, and very, very serious, which is, is good. I mean, I think there's something for that, too. Yeah. So I, I like all of Jane Austen. And so when I say that this is unlike any other, it's not that I'm criticizing the other. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that this is a different key, a different tenor. Congratulate me, my dear. Frederica's aunt and uncle have taken her back to Churchill. I thought you'd grown to enjoy Frederica's company, so. Comparatively, a bit. But I'm not so self-indulgent as to want to wallow in the companionship of a child. And you chose to change the title, the original title. Yes, I did. Um, we don't know what her title was. I've actually seen the manuscript, and um, they, they c cut off the, the cover. Mm -hmm. And um, Susan had actually been the title for Northanger Abbey. And her, her nephew seems to have put this title on. I don't like the title Lady Susan. So I took an earlier Jane Austen title, kind of thrown away, I think, in an earlier short story, um, and, and put it on this, Love and Friendship. Love and Friendship is not just about Lady Susan. There are lots of And that's stories. partly it. I thought that just calling it Lady Susan would minimize the roles of everyone else, and I wanted to emphasize that. So I sometimes say that this is... Um, the Jane Austen story that guys would like. I mean, this is the adaptation. <laughs> We're not trying to do the big, romantic, you know, letting, heading to a wedding, although there are weddings. Um, we wanted to make this the kind of funny Jane Austen that guys will like too. And there are a lot of really good comic performances that I think they will enjoy. It's a James Martin, vastly rich, rather simple. How jolly, tiny green balls. What are they called? Peas. Sir James Martin. Yes. His character is quite remarkable. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, in the novel, there are no letters from Sir James Martin, so there's a big opportunity to do more with him, to invent more. Mm -hmm. And this actor came up to set uh, Tom Bennett, and we enjoyed so much what he was doing that I started writing scenes for him every morning, getting up and giving him the scene. He did a beautiful job with it. And But he's being supported by a lot of other actors, Stephen Fry, yeah. um, Justin Edwards from The Thick of It, um, Jen Murray, they're all adding to sort of this comic tone. It's a tiny bit Monty Python-esque, but still within the serious frame of, of Jane Austen. So, um, yeah, there's a, he's a breakout star, Tom Bennett. 
how much did, did, did Tom Bennett bring to the role himself? I mean, just huge. It's just <laughs> extraordinary because I know as the writer that a lot of the material that are getting big laughs, it's actually not funny. I mean, it's not that funny. Mm -hmm. And he makes it really funny. He okay. can make, how are you? I'm feeling fine. Really funny lines. Churchill, that's how you say it, all together like that. I'd heard church and hill, but couldn't find either. All I could see was this big house. <laughs> I'm also very intrigued by Kate Beckinsale. She yeah. is fantastic yes. as Lady Susan. Tell me about how you got her on board and why her in particular? Well, when I first read this, I thought this is just right for Kate Beckinsale, which made me think, well, this is a doable project because there are actors who can do it. At that point, she was much too young for it. Mm -hmm. And um, I took a long time, you know, slowly working off and on on the adaptation. And by the time we were really ready to go and ready to shoot, she was, you know, old enough for it, playing a beautiful young mother, looking for um, husbands for herself and her, her child. And so, I mean, Kate is exactly the right actress for this. Mm -hmm. People will forget that she came out of um, the miniseries Emma, based yes. on the Jane Austen, um, Cold Comfort that. Farm, wonderful performance, Jane Austen derived. I think even her role in Last Days of Disco was Jane Austen influenced. So this is really her returning to her home base. Have I done anything that's dishonored you or father? To honor means, among other things, to listen with respect to a parent's sincere counsel. I do listen with respect, Mama. It's just that, that if you will not pay attention to me, then perhaps you will to a larger imperative, the law of the universe. An offer as splendid as Sir James's is not likely to come around again. He has offered you the one thing he has of value to give, his income. I fear and reproach myself for having shielded you for far too long. Had I let you starve a little bit more, you would resist much less. If Lady Susan was alive today, would she be thriving? Absolutely. I think you could go to Palm Beach, Beverly Hills, <laughs> to all sorts of places, probably here in the UK too, and find many very successful Lady Susans. Much married. With their, with their affluent husbands. Yeah, I'm not sure if Melania would have married Donald if he had no money. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Whit. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. Thanks. That was fun. Seems Lady Susan will finally visit. Lady Susan Vernon. That woman's a fiend. Congratulations on being about to receive the most accomplished flirt in all England. Excuse me for arriving this way. What a delightful family pose. Mrs. Cross has come with me as my companion to pack and unpack. And as there's a friendship involved, I'm sure the paying of wages would be offensive to us both. My brother-in-law is very rich. In one's plight, they say, is one's opportunity. Sir James Martin, vastly rich, rather simple. How jolly. Tiny green balls. What are they called? Peas. If my daughter were not the greatest simpleton on earth, she'd be engaged to him now. But, Mama, I can see Sir James is a kind man, but marriage is for one's whole life. Not in my experience. May I present Lady Susan? Delighted to make your acquaintance. He's handsome, isn't he? In a calf-like way. Mannerings in town. Have you seen my husband? Horrid woman. Deranged. But if she were going to be jealous, she should not have married such a charming man. Does this woman always get her way? She has an uncanny understanding of men's natures. I can't help fear that Lady Susan Vernon would destroy every comfort of our lives. With pleasure. How ungentlemanly. I'm enjoying Sir James's visit to Churchill. Churchill? That's how you say it, all together like that. I'd heard church and hill, but couldn't find either. All I could see was this big house. <laughs> you promised that you would give up all contact with this woman. What a mistake you made marrying him. Too old to be governable, too young to die. Lady Susan. How dare you address me, sir? Be gone or I will have you whipped. Outrageous. Have you never met him? No, I know him well. I would never speak to a stranger like that. 